Good day, and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Dr. Ian Malcolm. Today, we're reviewing the Rode NT1 Large Diaphragm Condenser Microphone, not to be confused with the Rode NT1A, as they are often confused. As always, check your screen to find the real-time information on the equipment I'm using and when I'm using it. Full disclosure, I bought this microphone with my own money and I'm in no way affiliated with Rode. These are my own opinions based solely on my own subjective experiences. I'll be using a limiter for most of this video due to my terribly uneven voice sounds. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, some quick company history. Rode wasn't always Rode. It began in 1967 as Friedman Electronics, owned by husband and wife team Henry and Astrid Friedman after they relocated from Stockholm, Sweden to Ashfield, Australia. They relocated to Australia after they were given the rights to distribute German pro audio gear called Dynacord, and did so for a number of years, until Henry died in 1987. Their son Peter then took over the company, but due to his limited business experience, he soon found that the company was in tremendous debt. He needed a plan. He remembered a large diaphragm condenser microphone that he saw at a trade show in China and quickly ordered a small batch of them and had them modified. Those mics sold very quickly. So quickly, in fact, that he said the sales were taking off like a rat up a drain pipe. That gave Peter an idea. He unofficially called the mic the Rodent One. That moniker kind of stuck, but it was an awful name. He then modified the name to Rode NT1. He added that O character to reflect the company's Scandinavian beginnings, and also to give a certain uh, je ne sais quoi, European flavor. Many other microphones targeting home studio enthusiasts were subsequently designed and manufactured by Rode as they introduced several other mics in the NT line over the next couple of decades. But the NT1 remains their best-selling mic of all time. It's gone through many changes and modifications since its rodent beginnings, of course, but here it is as you'll find it today. I did not know any of that before I researched it for this video. Fascinating. The Rode NT1 features a one-inch gold sputtered capsule that is internally shock mounted. It has a cardioid pickup pattern and has a frequency range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, the precise range of human hearing if you're a baby. It has an XLR connector and requires phantom power to operate it. There are no switches to be found on the body, just the mic doing the one thing it does very well. The NT1 can be yours for 359 Canadian dollars or 280 US dollars. It has an output impedance of 100 ohms, has a maximum SPL of 132 decibels, and an insanely low self-noise of 4.5 dBA. That's incredibly low, perhaps among the lowest self-noise of any microphone in the entire world. It weighs 440 grams, that's about one pound. The measurements are, oh, just let me get my trusty measuring tape here. You know, this measuring tape was manufactured in 1891. I picked it up at a convenience store in Ot 7. We're at about seven long and about uh, two and a half wide in and around there is tubular inches, of course. The frequency response of this mic is what interests me the most. Check this out. Look at how flat this is. Normally mics in this price range have frequency responses that are all over the place. They tend to be ultra bright and often have high end distortions that cannot be EQ'd out. But not this one. It has a very small but smooth bump from about 4000 Hz to around 12000 Hz. The rest is remarkably flat. Flat mics might be boring to some people, but I assure you they are anything but. You can shape a flat mic into anything you want, and the NT1 is no exception. It really captures the highs with a smoothness rarely found in mics of its class. Its sibling, the NT1A, is famously a high-frequency offender. It has a sharp, ear-fatiguing bump in the high end, and it's 
really hard to EQ out due to the distortions present. But not this one. This one is smooth and flat. Let's do some experiments. Let's check the off-axis rejection. How about the proximity effect? If I get real close on this, how does that sound? Is it sounding pretty good? I think it does. Sounds pretty good, very intimate sounding. I am, I'm not a fan of this thing. This thing is a pain. <sighs> that thing is an absolute pain in the ass. I don't know why I kept that on for it, but it comes with this um, pop screen uh, and I really hoped it came with the other one. I think this one's called the SM6 or the other one is. I wanted the one made by Rycote, but of course I ended up getting sent the one uh, that is made by Rode. And uh, same one that comes with the NT1A and I'm going to say I am not a fan of it. It is really a pain in the butt. It, it's constantly being moved and you got all these different things you gotta, it's, it's, got, it's, just, it's just a massive pain in the ass. How about a plosive test? This is gonna suck. There's that, uh, we're having a big storm outside, so, uh, if you hear all that wind, I mean, this mic will pick up everything, but you can, you can hear the wind just smashing the house. It's, uh, it's crazy. Living in the Antarctic is, uh, sucky at times. Anyway, poop and peep. Yeah, that's really bad. So let's try it with this crappy, Poop and pee, poop, 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 poop. It's not, it's much better. It's, it's good. Um, it's not bad. I, I, actually, it's good. I don't like it. I don't like it because it blocks, it blocks everything. And it's a pain in the butt to, I wish it was just kind of a separate thing that came with it that you could just attach to yourself. Like, uh, like a Stedman, like this guy. But no, alas, it's part of the mic shock mount. Anyway, p -p 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 works good. Tried it with the Stedman. Just gonna hold it right here. Poop, 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 poop. Test, 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 test. Poop and pee, poop and pee, poop, 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 poop. Not bad. I like the Stedman. I've always liked Stedmans. They're really cool. They work by blowing. This is not a this is not a review about the uh, Stedman, so I'll do one at another time. Anyway, just 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 listen to this thing. Just listen to this. I'm not even using a pop screen, and I'm using mic technique by speaking a bit like 45 degrees, so it's pointed off axis uh, to my mouth, and I'm I'm using it this way. And, and I'm, I'm just listen to this thing. The S's are there. They're not they're not prevalent. They're not poke in your ear just a smooth kind of a smooth thing i mean you know you can ds it of course but uh but it's not like it's other really lightweight nt1a brethren sister brother right because you know phallic and all that but anyway yeah let's listen That sound you hear is a bar fridge. It makes this weird sound like it's dying and it's been doing that for years, like seven years, so it's a long death. I mean, that's a quiet microphone. Oh, I like this. I like it a lot. I think I'm gonna keep this uh, pop screen off for the rest of this. All right, time to move it all around anyway because it's time for the music examinations. This is loads of fun It's a really crappy name 
Let's put the hyphen two spaces left Then it's different but the same How about as a boom mic? Of course, we gotta try this because why not? Okay, so it's not that great only because it has a wide polar pattern and will tend to pick up everything in the room and reject very little. This is usable when in a pinch, but not recommended unless you've got a well-treated room and uh, complete silence. You've got a purdy, you got a purdy mouth. Honestly, I'm not a fan of this uh, whole shock mount. Does it work great? I don't know, just not, not a fan of this one. So. Yeah, I think I'm going to spring for that uh, right coat one. Seems to be a lot better and a lot of people like it. Plus it has that metal pop screen, which I'd much rather since uh, metal you can wash. I should note that any large diaphragm condenser mic will work exceptionally well for field recording or Foley applications. Given that you have sufficient wind protection for the former applications and silent acoustically treated room for the latter ones. So there you have it. And now it says... This mic will work for pretty much any musical situation. It's great on acoustic guitar, percussion, vocals, and even mic guitar cabinets. I'm not personally a big fan of using condensers on guitar cabinets. Not, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just not personally a fan of it, unless I'm you know, mixing it with uh, dynamic or particular sound I'm after. But it'll do just fine in that application if needed, as you just heard. For spoken word, this is a fabulous mic. That flat frequency response really helps this mic go a long way. Listeners will have less of a chance of getting ear fatigue from listening to this mic in a podcast or as a voiceover mic for hours. It's really something. I actually really love this microphone. I'm impressed. Really, I am. I also have the NT1A version, and I was not as impressed. I'll do a review on the NT1A in the future. But it has its uses. Anyway, that's not about this. Would I recommend this NT1? Absolutely. I think it's among the very best large diaphragm condenser microphones in its class. That flat frequency response makes this a fantastic all-around LDC large diaphragm condenser for all your musical and voiceover needs. If you need an affordable mic that can do all those things... This is the mic to get. I have not yet tested a large diaphragm condenser mic in this price range that can beat it. But if you're a mic company who thinks your large diaphragm condenser product can best the Rode NT1, then by all means, contact me. Let's see how your champion fares when pitted against the mighty Rode NT1 in the formidable arena of the mine laboratory. I'd be shocked if the NT1 can be beat, but you know, life uh, 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 finds a way. Bye now. End transmission. Well, that was a comedy of errors. <laughs>